Hey guys, it's Matt here. And in this video, we're gonna be upgrading this Xbox with a two terabyte SSD. I got it used from a friend for 125 bucks and it served me very well. However, well, I'll just show you. If we go to the disk space here, this is a bit of a problem. <laughs> this thing has 500 gigabytes and 145, I think is used for, or no, 135 is used for the system, which is a lot for the Xbox, but it makes sense because it's gotta have spots for updates. It has spots to store temporary files. However, this Xbox can actually be upgraded and not only will this make the capacity four times as big, it'll also make it much faster. I got myself here a crucial two terabyte SSD. I think it was around 130 bucks. So it's not a terribly expensive upgrade, especially if it extends the life of this console. Now, in this video, we are going to be pulling this apart. I would normally show the process of how to get the SSD partition, but that was a pain and well, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, I just did it all already on my computer here. So I've already done that already. I'm just getting stuff copied over to the flash drive and then I'll be done with this part. If you do need to know how to do this, I will leave a link in the description with a tutorial video and I'll give links to all the files that you need as well. So yeah, you might've asked why I didn't go external and that's because, well, one, I don't want to have an SSD sitting on top of this, but two, I don't wanna have to have the possibility of USB slowing down speeds. I don't think that USB would really cause that much of a problem, but the biggest reason is because I want this thing to be inside the console. It'll speed up boot times. It'll, it'll basically speed up everything. An external SSD SSD will not do that. It'll just speed up game times for whatever games are installed. And also because I want a hub for all of my gaming. This thing has all the games I play basically, besides a few on Steam that won't run on here. Well, yeah, I gotta get this thing turned off to get it work to work on it. So let's do that real quick. So yeah, I've been working on this for a little while now. So yeah, as I said earlier, I had already done everything but when it comes to setting up the Xbox drive. I was actually going to do it on camera, but then I tried to find screen recording software and I figured, you know what, it'll just be easier for me to not do it. And it'll save time for you guys in the video who just wanna watch me do this kind of thing. If you do want to see a video on actually how to do this, there's a much better explanation from someone who can explain this much better than I can in the video description. But yeah, let's get this Xbox torn apart and get the SSD installed. So. I've got the Xbox One right here. Let's get this over with. I'm not looking forward to having to do this, but I mean, hey, getting two terabytes in this thing would be awesome. So let's do it. I have gotten the firmware on a thumb drive, which hopefully will work just fine. I've hopefully got the correct guide for this thing. The first step in the guide is to void your warranty. Well, not really. This thing does not have a warranty anymore. It's being it's friggin' nine years old. You can see it's got a tamper-proof sticker right here. We're gonna have to cut that. So I'm going to use just my pry tool here. I don't know if this is gonna be strong enough to cut. Pretty sure that was supposed to say void. No, it just says Microsoft on the bottom, but it didn't. <laughs> the sticker is so old that it just kind of peeled away. I will clean this up later. So that's probably the easiest step of the process. Let's go on and move to the next step. It says just pry up with this. There we go, we're getting there now. Yeah, now I can use this tool. So this mesh here, it's not really a mesh, but this, tray here comes off. Well, I don't know where these clips go, but oh yeah, that's fairly simple. I need to do the other side too, I think. There we go, and do this side. There we go. I always hate plastic tabs because they really can be a pain there we go. Yeah, that was fairly simple. There's a small plastic tab that reads, of course, at the front corner of the Xbox. Slide this tray back and remove it. Oh, I see. So this just opens, oh, that <laughs> just fell off. <laughs> okay, there we go. That was easy and it actually says super speed USB. I did not know this was USB 3. Cool. As I figured would happen, my phone decided, hey, let's use continuity camera, even though I didn't ask for that. So it just it interrupted the recording. Thankfully I wasn't doing very much anyways. Oh, come on. Come on, this worked a couple times, but just um, unfortunately, no. No! No! This is damaging my tool. Ah! Get destroyed my tool! I need to watch the video. This is not working. It says pull it apart and unclip the clip here. That worked. I can see. Okay. Oh my gosh. That, I don't ever want to do that again. Holy crap. 
So yeah, I'm gonna, so just keep pulling upward. I think I can use this tool now. Okay, and I assume you just go along the other side. It says it should be ready to come off, but it says if not, then keep going on this side. And mine does not seem to want to come off yet. So let's keep going. Oh, um. Yeah, mine does not want to keep going. Oh, geez, okay. I barely pulled and it worked. Okay. Of course, the screwdriver method doesn't, but how is this attached? So it says it connects up here. The question is, how do you pull this off? I need to watch the keep watching the video. Mine doesn't do that. Mine just doesn't want to come off. Like you pull it open and it's splitting this. It's such a nightmare. Now, people are saying don't pull this off. Yep, I see it. There's a ribbon cable right here that needs to come out. Can you just do this? Do like that, and then doesn't it just come off? Yeah, okay, that was easy. Okay, here we are, that is dusty. Uh, I might wanna blow the dust out of that before I go ahead and continue. Next, I gotta see. I assume now that this is the time where the screwdriver comes in. Does this fit? <laughs> no, just gently pull up on the speaker cable. Just rock it. There we go. Remove these two screws here. It looks like these are all the same. But yeah, we can just unscrew this here. It says lift it straight up. This is not coming out. So it says pull it directly up. But that, okay. So, I'll do that. Except, why is mine so annoying? <laughs> why, why do I have such bad luck with this? Ah! Jeez. Okay, I got it. Oh, <laughs> gosh, I hate this. You, know, you can tell when companies make things easy to take apart and then when companies don't, and this is one of those moments where they really don't. Oh, of course. Of course they have to do this. It's clipped in right here. I'll just leave it dangling then. It says unscrew this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Yeah, all these, okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Is this not the same screw size? Whoa, uh, oh my gosh. Look at that beast. Oh gosh. Gee whiz, these are in there. Now, you guys are lucky that you're not doing this. You're just seeing me suffer because this has been a nightmare so far. Especially when it's like a console that you love. Like this thing is like one of my favorite, if not my, no, this is my favorite console that I've, like the best thing I've ever owned so far. I'm sure when I get a Series X that'll change, but don't jump. The dust is just falling off of this thing right into, <laughs> gee whiz, yeah, dust is just falling right off of this thing right onto my desk. There we go. Oh no, it's gonna be one of these things. Yeah, this isn't, oh no. This is a sturdier screwdriver that apparently it seems to fit better, so let's try it. There we go. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't wanna keep trying with something that's not proper for it. I was gonna say, I think the screw bit I have is like in between the sizes I need, and it was. It works for screws that are not in very well, but it does not work for ones that aren't. I'm gonna need to buy a more proper thing for this. I'm on the home stretch. It says lift, but do not remove the case. That's fine. So this should just lift up. Theoretically, but not, it's not coming up. I think, did I miss a screw? Oh, I didn't. Oh no, it does come up. I just got a little fused on there. Aha! I did miss a screw. I was like, why is this not coming up? That's why. Yeah, you need to take out all the screws first. Glad I didn't pull too hard. I could have damaged something. So yeah, let's pull or unscrew this last one here. Pull up the case. Don't pull it out. They say just pull it up because there is still a cable. Yep, I see it. Come on, come on up, you little idiot. One side, there, there we go, jeez. Yeah, cool, got it. Hard parts are pretty much over. Hard drive is right here. Here's the SSD. Looks like it's just hooked in. There's just a SATA port right on the board here. It just says lift and remove. Does it just come off? It does just come out, okay. That's convenient. And it looks like it is a Samsung 500 gigabyte drive. Uh, they say I'll plug it, I will. I was actually not going to, but I'm like, you know what? It's probably just safer if I do. It's just a regular SATA data port. Same with the optical drive, though. I think the optical drive is paired, but I don't remember. And it looks like, yeah. So the hard drive just comes out. You got these star screws down here that you just unscrew. So pop this one. There we go. And now that just lifts out. Of course they make this difficult. 
this just unplugs, put this to the side and pop in the SSD. This has been already partitioned. Everything is done with this. Now we just need to plug this in. So there we go. Screw this side back in like so. I'm not sure actually how much of that was on camera. I hope that some of it was at least. It's really hard working on this and making sure the camera is also focused on it. It's one of the reasons why I need to get a phone with a wide angle camera because then I can record in wide angle and then just zoom it in and footage. So get this screwed in here. And I don't really care about the data that is on this hard drive because all the save data that Xbox has is all stored in the cloud. So everything that I do is gonna be just saved like I just said, on the cloud. So I don't need to worry about that. So let's put the hard drive back into place. Make sure it's properly inserted, and there we go. Um, plug in the SATA connection here. Plug in the power connection here. And now it's time to put this thing back together. I'm so happy to be able to say that. This was a nightmare. So you put this tray back in. If it looks, I gotta plug in a Wi-Fi card. So this just plugs straight in. This is backwards. No, this can is it backwards? No, it wasn't backwards. It just wasn't going in for some reason. So there we go with that. Pop this back down here. There we go. Nice, that is think in properly. Push this down and I guess screws back in. It's funny because this whole thing is rocking now. Because I think these screws go all the way through like this, yeah. Um, and then they just screw in to I think even the bottom of the case. So now if I do this, let's just pop one of these guys back in here. I'm just making sure, I, there's only one thing to unplug in there. That's not rocking anymore. So yeah, that actually holds this all the way into the bottom case. I don't know if there's a screw there. Dang, wow, okay. And no, I don't think there was a screw in that corner. So yeah, this goes like that. There's another screw over here that just sits in like this. This one's the one that I destroyed with the thing, but that's okay, it doesn't need to be super proper. Nobody's gonna see the inside of this thing again. There's a screw. I need to look at the diagram again and just see. So there's one there. Is there any on this side? Yes, there is. There's one right here. I was gonna say, this is rocking a lot more than is comfortable for me. <laughs> so now that is in. That's not rocking that much anymore. I think once I get this screw in, it won't rock at all. And also while I'm up here, I might as well just make sure everything is plugged in correctly. Why is this popped out like that? There we go. So that goes like this. There we go. Let's pop or plug this back in here. The antenna for the Wi-Fi. Plug in the speaker. And I don't like how that's just like this. So, and I don't want to, I can't obscure that. I think it, it's fine. <laughs> There's another screw that goes down here. Screw up like this. I'm not screwing these down nearly as tightly just because there's no reason for me to. And I was like, am I missing one? No, I'm missing two because I have two screws here. So let's pop that there. Screw this down without hopefully, yeah, there we go. It's like, I don't want to accidentally screw that part up. So yeah, this Xbox now has two terabytes of space. That is insane to me. And it's got an SSD now too. So that's flipping awesome. So let me see this through here, here. Uh, this might be covering a hole. No, it is not. Let's see, there, there, there. Oops, right here. Right at the very corner. Okay, the screws are in. Pop in the Wi-Fi card again. That should be easy put these screws in. Unfortunately, you're probably like, well, why are you reassembling it without testing it? Well, here's the big problem. One, the SSD I know for a fact works. Uh, and this is actually too big. I need to swap to the smaller one. There you go. And two, you can't actually power this thing on without it being put back together, unfortunately, because the power button is on the front case. There we go. This thing will not start up properly because while well, it is formatted properly for the Xbox, it is not, there's no OS on it. So yeah, it's gonna throw an error. That's why I have the installation media. It's interesting to say that, but yeah, it's basically like a PC. It's time to first get this ribbon cable back plugged in here. I don't know how the heck I'm gonna manage to do that. I don't know how the heck you're supposed to do that. So the person that I fix it guy is saying, we should recommend that you separate these panels. Question is, I don't know how to do that. I guess I can look in here and see how these clips are held in. Oh, I see. You just, there are eight clips on the front here. Thankfully, uh, since I'm inside here, I have easier access to this. I guess now all we gotta do is pop this back down like this. Okay, here we go. Can you close it? Like that. Oh yeah, I got it, cool. That was not terribly difficult actually once I pulled the front piece off. Okay, so you push this down first. That sounded seamless and easy. Okay. Oh gosh, this is not going in. No, so those do go. Ugh.
There we go. There we go. There we go. That's what I wanted to hear. Push the all the edges down. I think that's it. Got to pull. Put this little bit. Put this back on the camera here. Put this little bit right here back into place. So slide that in, and then pop this side panel back on. And that is a finished and upgraded Xbox One. Okay, now power this thing on and see if it works. Okay, um, that's good news. It's throwing this. Something went wrong, but that is okay. I have the media that I need here. And offline system update is grayed out, but that's because I'm plugging the flash drive yet. So let's do that. And there it is, offline system update. Let's try it. Oh, it sees it. Look at that. There we go. So now I just gotta wait for this to finish. This will probably be a while. And indeed, it did take quite a long time. However, it completed without a hitch. And before I knew it, I was back at the Xbox dashboard again. It was actually very nice how the whole system worked. It was basically back to the way it was before. So I had all my apps, all of my games, all that stuff. Obviously they weren't downloaded yet, but after a couple days of doing that, everything was back to the way it was before, and I suddenly had way more space. Alrighty, so you can see that I got my Xbox fully set up here, and if I go to settings, look at that, it's got all two terabytes there. Now obviously, it's gonna be a little bit different because the Xbox uses a decent bit of space for temporary storage, and for update storage, and all that fun jazz. But yeah, now that I have two terabytes of space, we're actually doing pretty good with games. I've got all the same stuff that I had before. And you can see here, I've got my list of all of the games that I play here. I plan to buy more now that I actually have space for more. I plan to get this Xbox fully loaded up with a bunch of stuff wherever my library is. I did not say that connect. <laughs> but yeah, it works very well. It's actually a lot faster too, which I expected, but that wasn't the reason why I bought the SSD. I bought the SSD just because I wanted something that would be faster theoretically, but that wasn't the main goal. It was mainly for storage and just to help with seek time. So yes, it is much faster. In fact, if I were to open up a game here, uh, it's not gonna be fast. That's the thing. It's not fast to load a game because this console is nine years old. The CPU is still holding a lot of it back, but it doesn't take very long anymore. So like, let's open up Forza Horizon 4 here and you'll see just what a clean opening of a game looks like. I want to do Forza Horizon 5 because that has to do Game Pass authentication stuff because I don't own it. Okay, so I've got the thing open here. I had to mute the audio because the music is copyrighted. So yeah, you can see here it's loading up the game. It basically instantaneously loaded the menu and look at that. This normally takes forever. Forza Horizon 4 is extremely unoptimized for hard drives. They fixed this in five actually. Um, but yeah, look at that. It's already opened up. There we go. I'm gonna back out of this. Thanks, Anna. But yeah, that worked very well. In fact, I'm actually surprised by that. There we go. Look at that. This works very well if I'm up the pause menu. That was basically instantaneous when it loaded. It lagged a little bit. That's just the GPU and CPU and this thing being old. But normally that takes forever. It does the car transition and then it takes a little bit and then brings the menu. Or the glitch happens where it fails to load the menu and then the game just hangs. You have to restart it. Yeah, you can see here, this works totally fine. I do need to buy Forza Horizon 5. <laughs> So yeah, would I recommend doing this for yourself? Uh, I can't really say that I recommend doing this unless you really know what you're doing. The original Xbox One is a pain in the butt to do this with. So I wouldn't exactly suggest doing it unless you really have the willpower that I would, which is too much. <laughs> 
to get this thing upgraded, especially with how Xbox Ones are kind of dying off nowadays. You're not gonna always have the latest and greatest games on the Xbox One, though a lot of developers are still making games for the Xbox One, just because they use the same architecture, so if their game is not super intensive, they most likely will support the Xbox One with their games. So, I mean, this can play a lot of games, it even can play the latest Forza Horizon, which is insane to me. So, that's pretty cool. And that's actually one of the reasons why I still use this thing. It still plays all the games I want it to. It doesn't play them amazing, but it still plays them. Forza Horizon 5 plays, I think, at roughly low settings. It doesn't tell you, but at roughly low settings at 30 FPS. So it plays decent enough for me. I don't need super high frame rates. I just want to be able to play the games I play. And obviously smaller games will work just fine. Like The Sims plays, I think, at 30 FPS. Trials Fusion, this plays at 60 FPS. Uh, PC Building Simulator also plays at 60 FPS. One Shot, that's a very simple game that plays at 60 FPS. This is 60, 30, 30, 30. Uh, and then these are, yeah, these are just apps. Yeah, so the Xbox One still has a decent amount of power in it to be able to play a lot of games. So, I mean, yeah, if you want to throw an SSD in your Xbox, do it. It's not like it's gonna make it worse. It's a really, really, good upgrade for these consoles if you don't want to buy a new one. I did save a lot of money buying a new console because I can just use this for a little while longer until I do decide to get a Series X, which will be my next console. So yeah, that's about it for this video. If you liked it, then hit the like button and get subscribed if you like the content that you see on this channel. I'll leave a link in the description for a tutorial on how to do this yourself. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys all later. Bye.